this is David Harris, Coach Cheese from the Coat Classic Film, The Warriors, and you are listening to the Movie Ray Show. It's time for the movie raid, and tonight's victim is actor David Harris at his Cochise from the Warriors, also played in Quicksilver, amongst others. Hello. Hi there. What have we been up to? Uh, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know, just uh, life of an, of an actor. Life of an actor. And where has Secret. life of an actor taken you? It's been good to me. I've traveled the world. I've been all over the USA and uh, met some amazing, wonderful people. People, so, you know, it's been good. Good ride. Now, you've been doing a couple of conventions here now, at least uh, of this year. Are you doing a lot more, or are you kind of pacing yourself? Well, we, you know, we pace ourselves. We're in such demand with the conventions, so it's been a lot of fun meeting the fans on a one-on-one basis like that. Next year, February of 2019, 2019, will be our 40th anniversary of the Warriors. So, of course, that's going to be a big deal around the country and around the world. So we're really looking forward to that, going on tour and uh, meeting fans from uh, the USA, around the country, and uh, you know, around the world, wherever we go. Are you doing any other projects uh, in between, or are you uh, basically focused on this for now? Oh, I've just got finished doing a show called The Deuce, which is based on 42nd Street, Manhattan, back in the day, back in the... 70s. So I worked on that show, and I'm still doing uh, guest shots all over the place. Uh, are you go strictly to just television now, or are you pretty much just bounce anywhere that suits your needs or interest? Well, well, I kind of take whatever job that I feel most comfortable with in a project that I feel I can lend to with the, the character that they want me to play. So basically, I mean, I'm not doing a lot of theater anymore. I've basically, been doing a lot of television and film. But it's been a lot of television lately, as opposed to film. Now, how, since the, your time in the Warriors, uh, has getting jobs uh, acting wise has it actually become a little bit more smoother for you, or is it pretty much the same treatment as you know anybody else that wants to get a job, an, an acting job? No, I'm a veteran actor. You know, I'm not out of the gate. I've been around the block a couple of times. So you know, most of the people in California, New York, they know me. They know my work. My work speaks for itself. People call and ask my agents and managers, this is David available to do this. We have a, a job we'd like for him to do. Is he available? So it's like that for me. So, you know, pay my dues, as we call it, in the world. You know? Yeah, and oftentimes, I mean, uh, since there's any debut of a film or so, usually a lot of actors tend to be stick to television and just basically bounce off of that for a while, and then sometimes they'll do something outside of it, and then sometimes you just don't hear back from them at all. That's true. It depends on how the... Uh Penguin and swing. Most films, a lot of people either interpret it or films actually want to send a message to to an extent. Since the Warriors had quite a powerful message uh, when Cyrus gives his speech, do you think that can be applied even in real life, even today? No, I, I don't think that that. I mean, it was that that's Hollywood. I, I don't think that uh, you'll have one you know one gang kind of running the whole works. No, I think that that's just. I don't see that. Plus, gangs are not what they were back in the 60s and 70s. And a lot of the gangs in the in the film were, you know, kind of imagine, imagination gangs. I mean, you really didn't have anybody running around dressed like the Baseball Furies or the Turnbull ACs or the Hi-Hats or some of these gangs that you saw in the film. Uh, they were not running around New York City <laughs> dressed like that. I mean, it was Walter's vision. And it was an amazing, amazing vision of he, of he that he had to, to make these these games look like that the whole interest of the uh, of the of the audience and the visual effects of it yeah I mean uh, it, it's it's truly a fantastic film itself and I, I'm not, I'm not going to get old fanboy on it because uh, I think it's a, a really actually I think it's an important film too because if you were to look at this film and compare it to daily type of activities or events, I mean, you kind of could take a little piece of it, like what Cyrus says in the speech. I mean, I'm talking about the speech itself, uh, not the actions of, of what he was trying to do, but I mean, like, the speech itself is, is pretty inspiring. Yeah, it is. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. I mean, uh, if, if something like that could indeed be uh, pulled off or come together, I mean, he had a very important message, do you know what I mean, in, in that speech. So, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, lot of truth to it in a lot of ways. Uh, I think, like, if they would apply at least some of that even into the film, I mean, it, it could do well without all the, you know, slapping all the marketing and 
all this, 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 you know, just to make a make a package out of it. I mean, if they just go straight to the, you know, ear to the ground source, you know, it, it could do very well. Oh, yeah, yeah you have a point there. Now, how has success changed your perspective on acting itself since the debut of this? I mean, I know you've been in quite a few other projects, but I mean, this one apparently, you know, everyone has certainly talked about. But how, how has acting, in terms of success, uh, changed your perspective? perspective of you not really i was you know, i keep myself well grounded you know, i mean uh i go on to the next project i just try to be the, i try to be the best possible actor that i can i try to give my best work in every project that i do it hasn't changed me i'm still a guy that you know rides the subways in new york city and walks around and ride my bike and i'm just i'm just me you know what i mean it, it hasn't changed me whatsoever since i got out of acting school the warriors was my first big major film. To me, it was the film that I had the most fun working on. I met some guys. We, we have become very, very good friends over all these years. Believe it or not, the film will be 40 years old, February of 2019. So, I mean, it's been some, some time under the rug there with this movie, but it, it has not lost anything. And the guys were very, very close friends. And our little warrior, Deborah Von Volkenberg, we, we've become family. And I haven't changed. I mean, one bit. I'm the same guy, I believe, and my friends tell me, and my most of all my family, that I, I, I've i been since I started acting 40 years ago. Uh, that's, that's just crazy. Because you look at look back between then and you look at now, and I would imagine you almost kind of laugh out, you know, what what's going on with, with how the technology and everything with film now is, is kind of a little bit more easier, a little bit more smoother here and there. And you're like, oh, wow, you have no idea what I went through. <laughs> Well, you know, the, the making making movies is totally different now. You know, it's so much digital and all this sort of stuff now. You know, when, when we shot the Warriors, film was still being shot on film. You know, but now it's so much digital stuff and the rest of it. And the technology, you know, it's advanced and movies look great. I mean, you know, you can do so much with computers and add and take out and embellish and all that. Back when we had the Warriors, it was, couldn't do all that. I'm I'm all for. Uh, technology and the way they make movies now but i kind of still like the old way like you know 50s 60s 70s 80s and so forth it, it you get that kind of in the moment kind of rawness to it i mean that in a good way i mean you feel the moment you look you're like you're basically right there in the moment you look at these like newer films okay it's all action-packed it's it's fast-paced it's this and that yes it's it's got good graphics here and there but it almost seems like the feeling is not there as much anymore you, you can't really focus on the actors themselves no it's because you you know it's so it's so computerized and so technology to the film you get caught up in watching special effects and all this sort of stuff so much and acting seems to be secondary you know it's all this other stuff that's working in film now when we shot the warriors you got caught up into the film you got caught up into the actors you got caught up to what they were doing what they were saying all those films back from you know when they started before they started making talkie you know silent film you know you 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 were watching what the actors were doing you know and wonderful directors and wonderful uh cinematographers and then we got the talkies and then you paid even more attention because now you can hear your actors speak all those great films that came out of the 40s and 50s films noir, all that black and white great stuff, all those great movies from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Uh, my favorite period was uh, the 70s. I loved all the stuff that came out of the 70s, like Easy Rider and Clockwork Orange and, you know, some of the stuff that, that was made by these amazing directors and the acting was just so superb. And that that was my time. I loved the 70s and I loved a lot of stuff that came out of the 40s. You know what I mean? The Bogart era, all these wonderful, wonderful actors, you know, the Brando era, you know, all these great films on the waterfront, you know, The Godfather, all these incredible, incredible movies. Oh, definitely. Uh, I mean, like, appreciation seems like it kind of dissipated since then. I mean, you see, like, all like the directors like Clockwork Orange and all, like like you just mentioned, these guys are, like, started their career, and you know, we know now, you know, since the last, what, 20 years, 30 years, whatever, and so forth, but like the appreciation seems like it's kind of depleted because it's you know like like I said it's all action based it's this that this and it's, you know slapping on a marquee a poster here and there but I'm like where is that real you know, in the moment anymore? No, it's not. It's, and it's just it's it's kind of sad in a way uh, because I think movies have become so. 
technical now and so computerized and what you can do with computers and what you can do on film now. And I mean, anyone with a cell phone can go out and make a movie now. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Digital camera. Go out and make a movie. You know? Yeah. You know, but it's it's technical. It's not it's not uh the way it was back in the day. No, that's what I always love the older films, man. I mean, just like the Warriors. I love the fact that it's in the time period, not like fabricated of the time period. It seems like you know, the actors were out trying to act the the part. I mean, you, you just felt and you, you can look that they're trying. I mean, it, I just think it's fantastic with these older films. I mean, kind of take notes from the from the directorial notes from then and still apply it today, even though we still have all this nice, good stuff with it. I mean, I'm not saying you're not going to make a bad movie with it. Right, no, no, and I, and I agree. I, what, uh, that's why I like Quentin Tarantino, because he, he has a feel for making films that look like and came out of the 70s and 80s. Do you know what I mean? I feel that's my opinion of, of Quentin's work. Do you know what I mean? And a few other directors that make their films look like that, you know, and it's not so digital and computerized and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Special right. effects and all that. I'm all about practical effects, and you know, you know, I, I believe it or not, I believe <laughs> I prefer a guy in a rubber suit rather than a puppet, rather than to see something that looks like just popped out of a cartoon where everything else is all frozen in the background. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. And it's like, all right, I'm going to go back to watching this. It's like, well, you're going to watch that? It's like, yeah, I'm going to watch that. But, I mean, it's about the, the quality and the commitment. And do you think commitment has depleted as well? Or do you think it's just a whole new re reformation and no one knows what to do anymore? Yeah, unfortunately, the, the movies has become now about money. You know, it's all, you know, I'm not saying that it's not, has not been about money before. But right now, it's it's basically a lot about money. You've got a lot of lawyers running studios and all this sort of stuff that people never see. And it's about, well, you know, the money, you know, we got to, we got to get what we want for our money. And it, it, it costs so much money now to make a film unless you're making, you know, student films and a very low, low budget films. And even with a very low, low budget film, you have to be very careful because the dollar can only go but so far. It's, these movies that they make for, you know, $100 million plus, I mean, the people that are in charge of the studios are worried about their money, you know? Yeah. And I understand that because it's a big investment. It is. No one wants to, you know, no one wants to lose. No one wants to put two, three, four hundred dollars into making a film and the thing makes $27 million at the box office. You know, no one, no one wants that. You know. Yeah, they, they got to make the money back somehow, and I totally understand on that on that side and stuff. But then when you just basically code it, code the entire film like this, it, it you know, it, it, you got to think about the audience, man. The audience is they're the ones that are going to watch this. They're the ones that either they're going to like it, they're going to hate it. They might get inspired by it. Then you know, you never know in general uh, about this but I think all companies really has to consider what, what the audience and not not exactly like on their opinion but the reaction right well I think right now with you know, all the films the, all the big budget films I mean these directors and their producers are all looking at like okay what does the audience want right now do they want a remake of the Bruce Willis film uh, it's now uh, now with uh, the Rock is called Skyscraper I mean you know all these remakes of stuff and you know, very very highly digital eyes and animated and you know all this sort of stuff. Special effects, great special effects. I'm not taking anything away from that. I mean, it, I mean, the stuff looks great. You know, back in the day when they made movies, uh, I mean, how many special effects did you see in the Warriors? You know what I mean? I mean, you know, we, it was a budget, I believe, of something like eight million dollars. That was considered a lot of money back in the '70s to make a film like like that. Like the Warriors, and, and now I mean, sure, if you would try to make the Warriors today, and I hope they don't, it would cost eighty million dollars more, whatever eight. I don't know. I mean, dealing with the city and trying to reproduce that. Yeah, it would basically be guest rappers playing as the Warriors and guns and all moderate and sex scenes here and there. It's just, uh, I really don't want to get into that. Would that. Be uh, to me, in my opinion, I you know, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, to me, certain films, you, you they're classic films, and you, it should be left alone, like The Godfather. How do you remake The Godfather? Yeah. It's like, don't you even dare touch the Back to the Front. Future either. Don't ever touch that. Make the Warriors. <laughs> you know, you can't. Certain things leave alone. You know, leave alone. And Hollywood makes a lot of remakes of stuff, 
And, you know, to me, I don't go see a lot of remakes of films because I just think, especially a classic kind of clown, I don't, I don't go see Yeah, I, I, there's, to me, there's a very few, for me, in my opinion, there's a few actual decent remakes that I was like, okay, that's pretty good, you know? Like, I absolutely love John Carpenter's The Thing, which is a, 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 it's kind of a remake adaptation. Oh. I love it. That's one of them. That's one of the films that, okay, uh, John did a great job with that, and it was very appealing to the audience, and it was a hit. And uh, it was a terrific, terrific movie. I saw it three times. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I mean, I saw the, the original one with uh, James Arnaz, who played the Thing back in the fifties, <laughs> when the fifties were cranking out all these monster movies and <laughs> all that sort of sci-fi movies. I, I thought that was a classic film, the Thing, the original one. But then John Carpenter did a great job with, with his remake. But I think he's an exception to the role. Yes, uh, I mean, the creatures were scary, they're nasty looking, and it just looks very scary. I mean, even the actors, I mean, there's some familiar faces, but they're not, at that time period, they weren't that well known, and that's what I loved about that. It's like, these guys weren't just something, you know, this came from, you know, a, a well-known franchise or whatever, and it's in like half a dozen other films, and, and, and to me, that's like, that's what really captures that moment. It's like, you don't know who these guys are, and you don't know how, you know, they're going to take their characters in this film. You've never seen this film. And I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, good point, good point. And do you think with, with companies now, that do you think even auditioning for a role is a little bit more selective rather than just auditioning for a role in hopes that you get the role? Or because, I don't know, they got to save that, you know, almighty buck, but sometimes they do simply cast whoever and then just throw them in the film, and then sometimes it doesn't work out. And that happens, that happens, and uh, a lot of times, you know, producers, they want to, you know, they, if it's a lot, it's a big budget film, they want, they, you know, they want you name actors to sell a movie. I mean, you're not going to make Mission Impossible without Tom Cruise. I mean, you just, I mean it's not going to happen. There's certain movies that they, they the studios just want, they got to have name actors, they got to have what they call class A actors, first tier. You know, a name before the name of the movie. It's got to be starring, you know, whoever. Then, you, then you get the title of the movie. I mean, that's just that's just, just dollars. You I mean you got to sell your movie. You, you know, you got to sell it to the audience, and, and you you got to have people that two hundred million dollar movie. I mean, you got to have Leo DiCaprio in it or somebody. You, know? you can't just put some unknown actors. Most studios are not going to trust. Well, we don't have a big name. I don't know. You know, some actors came from out of nowhere. We're going to give them a, a role like this in a two or three hundred million dollar. Uh, so most studio heads are not going to take that kind of a chance. They want someone that's bankable, that's going to bring the audience in. Yeah, but when it comes to, like, since you played so many supporting roles and quite a few main roles, how would you actually pr approach an actual interest to bring that out to the audience, especially when you're playing as a, a supporting role? Well, I mean, to me, the supporting roles, are always, to me, are, are the best roles. The, like the character actors, like Joe Pesci, who, who's doesn't play the lead man, but always plays the backup and, and the character guy to the to the lead guy. I'm a character actor and always have been a character actor, and uh, I approach my work from that that point of view. I love being a character actor. I, I love the kind of roles that I get as a character actor. I'm not going to be the star pretty boy. I'm not going to be a wonderful actor Denzel Washington. I mean. I'll, I'll be his sidekick. I'll probably be his sidekick, or you know, the the, uh, the character guy towards his character. And I like that. I I enjoy, you know, it's not that it's not that I couldn't play a, a lead role or or try and carry a film, but basically that's not been given to me. I I, I play the character guy. Yeah, and oftentimes, yes, supporting character, yes, can have an interest, some interest to the the lead role. Oftentimes, but sometimes. The, the supporting role character doesn't really spark any interest. They're like, oh, okay, it's that guy. No, no, absolutely. I mean, you, sometimes I go to movies and I, I'll, I'll, I can't take my eye off the character guy. These roles are juicy, they're wonderful, do you mean? And a lot of times it can be more interesting than the, the lead, the lead guys or lead women. Do you know what I mean? They can be more interesting. Yes, I, I totally agree. You remember the bad guy, you remember <laughs> the, the good guy, crazy guy you remember the character guy that was the lead lead guy or the lead girl best friend yeah or their nemesis there's always that one guy or that one girl that you could totally point out in like half a dozen of these films like hey there's that one girl that said that one thing and now she's you know doing half a dozen other uh, well known films <laughs> I mean I looked at I looked at a film like Silence of the Lamb I couldn't take my eyes off Anthony uh, you know Jody was wonderful but I couldn't take my eyes off Anthony to me the whole film was about him 
I mean, she was, you know, blah, 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 blah. And she was very good in that, in her role and so many other people. But I, to me, I couldn't take my eyes off Anthony Hopkins. I mean, I just couldn't. It's truly amazing when, when two characters have, you know, some kind of a relationship, friends, lovers, whatever, but also have some kind of a bond with the audience themselves. That's, that's what I see a lot of films today or just, just, just kind of not really pushing for that. I mean, sure, you, you got this uh, pizzazz. You got to have your audience on your side, too, at some point. Of course, of course. If the audience falls asleep or just gets bored, then the film didn't, didn't, didn't do its job or something's not right. You know, if you can't hold the audience, something's not right. Go ahead and plug in anything that you would like to promote, any convention, uh, you know, websites, any dates, or any projects that's coming out or anything like that. Yeah, people can go to my website. It's called theofficialdavidharris.com. And uh, you can find out what I'm doing, what's coming out, all of that sort of stuff. There you have it. That is actor David Harris. Warriors come out and play.